Hi, um, welcome to my channel. I'm Guru64, uh, which isn't actually my real name, uh, but there you go. Um, now I intend to show you some videos on how to do some interesting things with a C64 Mini or C64 Maxi. Um, in this particular video I'll be showing you first of all how to fix up a Quickshot 2 joystick. Um, now these are quite prone to failure um, because they contain some lead switches which um, once once those switches are snapped um, the joystick's pretty much useless and ready for the, for the bin um, unless of course you're diehard like me and, uh, uh, and are happy to fix it up with, with a few um, extra parts. So um, as you can see this joystick's been modified slightly um, and this has been modified to work with the uh, C64 Mini um, and this functions as the uh, supply joystick or, or not quite as bad as the orig original so it's even complete with the uh, TL and TR buttons but before we get to that um, which I'll be showing you in subsequent videos um, I'll just show you how, uh, first of all how to repair the leaf switches and any other broken switches in the joystick So we need a screwdriver, uh, which I have right here. Now this one is already prepared, so this won't be a tutorial on how to solder or anything like that. But I'll just guide you through um, the modifications required. As you can see there's a few extra bits inside this which um, you won't have in um, your joystick so uh, for now just ignore this and these buttons. So at the moment we're just interested in uh, this main board and, uh, and uh, this part of the stick. As you can see, um, the, the immediate difference you might notice uh, if you open up your own joystick is uh, the addition of these strikers here. So this design is kind of copied off um, Quickshot's own, um, so that their later joysticks have uh, some plastic protrusions from here to uh, to press some micro switches. Now, if we were to um, position switches underneath the um, the original position. Um, you know, without these extra bits, um, they will break off because there'll be too much pressure uh, directly on top of the switches. So these um, you know, these extra pieces here do allow for, for a little bit of flexibility. So if we start with uh, this part, so what what you will require is you'll require. Um, Eight of everything. So we here. This is actually just a male spade connector. So a spade connector, I should say. Um, now this particular one uh, ha has um, an eyelet connection here. So uh, rather than so, so it, it does need to be this type rather than um, the um, typical crimp fitting connectors. And these you'll find in uh, in some automotive shops. So uh, the other part you'll need is um, some machine screws. Uh, so um, what I'm pointing here is uh, that that's actually a Panhead M4 six millimeter machine screw. So you need four of those in the top. I think five or six millimeters should do, but but these are six mil, and then um, these have the corresponding nut here. And the idea here is to um, uh, basically have the pan head at the bottom just so it doesn't uh, restrict motion um, once they will fix up um, so if you have the nuts on the bottom side they'll kind of touch the the board and the joystick won't work 
So as you can see, I've uh, got, uh, you know, I've made up four strikers um, on each four corners of this stick. And that will be uh, pushing down these buttons here. Now the original pads um, are actually under here as well, but if you can see this little uh, plastic lug, that would have pushed down on the leaf switch, um, which you can see is broken off here. That would have pushed down the leaf switch, which then makes contact over here. So if I now show you the base of the unit, again this is the um, same spade connector and the same machine screw, pantom machine screw. And again uh, this time we put the screw head on this side and the nut on the, on the lower side. So the purpose of these is uh, just to give um, these switches something to hold on to. So these are actually um, surface mount switches, which uh, it, you know isn't the ideal type of switch to use for this. Um, but if you want to use um, pin switches, then that would require some drilling. So you know, like I said, this is just one way you can do this. That there are several ways, um, but this is a method I've chosen. So these switches are positioned uh, directly over the uh, the pad, which the lead switch would have pressed onto, and one end of the switch is. Uh, actually sold onto that same track and all the tracks are exposed here so there's no, the, the, you'll have no problem in, in soldering that on there so you'd have to scrape off any resin or anything like that so then once that's done then the other end of the switch needs to be connected to ground so this track here is ground so, so basically anything that comes off this central circle uh, will be ground and actually also if you can see from here you've got the first second that's the third track here uh, which has a black wire so again that's ground so but th this is all connected straight to here and that's connected there so see so, uh, once you secure these in a suitable position so if you can just see the angle there so you do need to play around with this so that the um the contact of the switch actually touches that and then you have to make sure that these and these don't short out. So, so once you've got that, um, as you can see, I've soldered a piece of wire from the spade uh, connector onto ground. It's the same over here. And then so, you know, whichever point's closest. And uh, once that's done, uh, that's pretty much it. So, The only other thing I'll uh, mention at this stage is um, these wires would normally be connected to a um, a nine pin D connector, so that the wire would have gone through this hole here and run under here and connect over here. So, um, my wire is actually forty, so I cut the end off that wire and then just soldered it straight onto a, a DB nine. Uh, I think it's a female socket. So, if you want to join, if you want to plug this into a, the original Commodore 64, then all you need is either a joystick extension cable, or um, you can actually use an RS-232 um, DB9 extension cable. So that that's basically a male to female cable, um, and usually those have all nine pins connected, and, and they'll be connected through. Um, they be straight through so you won't have any um, cables crossing over or anything like that. Okay so now we discuss that I'll just put this back together and just uh, demonstrate that working on a C64 Mini. Actually before I do I'll just show you the uh, strikers working so uh, if you can if you can just see, uh, these lugs have been bent just so they rest on the top of these switches. And that's the beauty of these, uh, you know, you, you can fine tune these uh, just by um, you know, grabbing a pair of pliers and bending these uh, so, yeah, so that they're in the correct position. So that, as you can see, yeah, these make quite good contact. So let's put this back together.
And as I say, I, I will uh, discuss uh, this sort of mod in a subsequent video. Um, but just to discuss what that does, that, uh, that that basically converts this to USB. And that allows the uh, this joystick to work on the um, C64 Mini, um, like the supply joystick. Um, and the added benefit is it works on PC too. In fact, it's just seen as a 16-button uh, joystick, minus about 10 buttons. Okay, so that's now back together, and hopefully I can show you this working. Now, as you can see on uh, my particular one, I've got the menu buttons of the um, C64 Mini embedded onto here as well. So, uh, as you can see, the menu is working. So, um, there you go, that button turns on the annoying music. This particular um, C64 Mini does also have a keyboard modification. I can post you links uh, for that as well. That's uh, made by some other clever person, so I can't claim any credit for that. Yeah. There you go. So you can see, there you go. using a, quite a fair amount of force here and uh, it's actually holding up pretty well. Of course it does have uh, it is rather clicky unlike the original but, uh, but definitely uh, better than the original supply joystick with the C64 Mini. And like I say um, I'll I'll show you how to adapt these uh, for that uh, in a future video. 
so hopefully you enjoyed this video and uh, if you did I uh, hope uh, I hope you'll subscribe so one day I'll be as popular as maybe Ryan and uh, what did I also leave some comments uh, in, in the comments below um, regard regarding the bill of materials and you know what you need to get this up and running okay thank you very much